top score to help them make it into the playoffs at the end of the day. We're going to kick it off with the ZBZ to the bottom right hand side. It goes to the bottom right hand side of the map from Romandy Gaming. It's our green Zerg player, Mamba. And to the top left, our pink Zerg player from Root Gaming. It is Sol. This wasn't on TL calendar or anything. It's on the TL calendar right now, Rahayo. So I don't know what to say to you. It's literally right there on the TL calendar. The stream is attached to it. It's been there all day. So I do not know what to tell you. It is there, ready for hype to be built. It's a team, it's the team league, right? You know, I mean, teams organize, you know, team schedule last minute sometimes as well. And, you know, we try and put as much warning up as possible. We try and, you know, give you guys at least a day's notice of matches. It's unrealistic to get kind of multiple days notice. It's just the way the league works. Nothing is going to be perfect. And as we get into this and we start up onto Frozen Temple, it's a hatch first from both players. Yeah, I mean, this ZVZ. Gonna have a hatch gas pull from both as well. So, so far, mirrored builds. Uh, just an extra um, drone already down for Mamba. And there's the spawning pools coming down very similar times, too. So, very similar stuff so far. No real differences as we get set up onto game number one of this best of seven. We're going to see exactly how this is going to go and what kind of way this is going to go. And again, every map's important. So, even just taking down Solo in the first game would help Romanda Gaming because then it also gives them extra chances against ne you know their next opponents you know you know whoever takes the first match actually gains a bit of momentum because okay the next the team after that then picks the player picks the map they can snipe them down but it's then the other team you know then the original team's kind of match pick player map pick player pick to go in the lead once more as we're going to have this overload coming across from solo having a look to see what's up what's going on hatcheries are about to finish for both players and we're going to be um looking to see how this is gonna go, and we'll, again, what these guys want to get up to. So far, nothing really aggressive out of either of them. Uh, just kind of link speed on the way, probably a Bane and S dropping down very shortly. Nothing really too crazy. As we have the Overlords continue to come across the map, and the Zerglings are gonna be coming in. And gonna be coming across to, again, just look to see what they can get up to, look to see how they, well they can trade. And um, again, just get try and get some information about what their opponent's doing. Bane and Nest dropping down already for Mamba. Solo with the Bane and Nest potentially ready to go down, but he's not putting it down just yet, so maybe he's trying to just go straight into Roaches instead here in the near future as this Queen is going to be coming forward to help the defense. And there is that Roach on the way down, so Solo going straight into Roaches. I might just make this a very big Roach Ling all in in the very near future as we do see these Lings. They want to shut down that circle in there, they do. And a major part of this for Solo's point of view is going to be denying his opponent vision of his base. And he's going to come out now, he's going to find another Zergling trying to make it forwards. Queen needs to get over here and try and defend another Queen here too. Coming forwards and just making sure that Zergling is not going to get any further information. So just keeping his opponent in the dark a little bit. I mean, Mamba doesn't see a Bane Nest on the low ground and he might take that as some kind of a sign. But at the same time, there's nothing to stop Solo just having a Bane Nest in his main base and just not utilizing the kind of... You know, the, the ability to kind of set up a little gap to slot your queen into to minimize the surface area on it. As we're going to see the roaches on the way up for solo. Seven of them in total. Again, this is going to be aggression out of him as Mamba. Well, he's going into a third base right now. He's going into his own roach warren. But how soon is that going to be up? I mean, 30 seconds or so? That's going to be 30 seconds plus roach build time. It's probably enough time for solo to get across the map here and to start getting damage done and of course then the roaches start popping out and you know a couple on their own and of course there's also the fact that solo is going to be reinforced with zerglings already using his lava on that and so he's going to have a whole bunch of zerglings to be able to tank for his roaches making them that much more effective as they come across here 10 zerglings on the way up in the production solo takes a third hatchery behind this as it's all about the aggression here for root gaming at the start of game number one of this best of seven these lings these roaches joining up together I'm going to be coming in towards this natural expansion in just a few moments' time. A few banes start to morph in. And we're going to see these roaches moving forwards and a single ravager starting to morph in as well. The roaches actually get a good kill or two. Now the roaches are going to be just coming in and just, again, taking down a few zerglings here. But again, it's just so much right now already for Solo. He's making his way onto the ramp to minimize the surface area. The banes not really connecting with anything at all. Zergling's actually going to surround the roaches of uh, Mamba. 
Amambu is in a lot of trouble here right away, but maybe if you can just find yourself a moment or two, you can hold on, but it's going to be tough as we see him all the way up to 38 thrones against just the 26 of Solo. And right now, Solo, he's got Zergli still streaming on in here. He's got just so many roaches as well. And then Queens in the back, well, they're not going to stay alive much longer either. They're dropping. There's no transfusers available. Cross of going to land on a few of them drones up to the top side of this mineral line. And it's going to be as quick, simple, easy GG. Adam Amber and Solo takes game number one of this best of seven just and without any issues. We're set to go. So currently down a game is Romandy Gaming. Their next player out is the Teal Terran player to the top left hand side of Korhal Carnage Knockout. It is Uzi Cody. And down to the bottom right hand side is going to be our pink Zerg player from Root Gaming. It is Solo. I did just mention the Patreon, guys. Again, if you're looking to support the stream and the content I'm producing, then you can check us out on Patreon, patreon.com slash wardy. Um, I'm currently actually looking for a new goal because I would like to put something up at 200. Uh, you know, I, I, like we, I like to always have a goal to work towards, and the current $200 goal is a bit shaky. I was going to like run a tournament every now and then, but um, I think I could do something better. So if you've got any good kind of goals, and when I'm saying, you know, for Patreon goals, I'm saying stuff like stuff I could start doing regularly, something like, uh, you know, like the YouTube content. It's like, I'll... You know, put out two pieces of YouTube content a week at $100. So I want something like that to kind of do at kind of uh, $200. If you guys got any ideas for that, please help. Um, sub emotes as well. We're fast approaching the 100 sub mark. We're on the hashtag road to 100 subscribers. And we are 17 away currently. So new emotes will be available soon. And I do want your guys' suggestions as to what those may be. So please do let me know. Let me know what's up. And uh, again, I'm always intrigued to hear from you guys. Again, I really do value... The interaction with you guys, like, I love talking to you guys, I love your ideas, um, a lot of people's ideas in the past have helped me kind of improve the stream and have been used as kind of goals in the, in the past as well. So always help, happy to kind of uh, hear things like this, so please do um, let me know. As we jump into this game, it is Kohal Carnage Knockout, which is a map which is unloved by the community to say the least, and to be fair, out of all the maps... I think the oh, I think all the maps are starting to grow on me a little bit, apart from this one. This one's kind of like just still stupid. Like the amount of times I feel like we're going to see these rocks get killed off and someone being knocked out of their natural expansion, is just going to be absolutely ridiculous. Like it's it's so stupid. It's it's kind of just dumb to a whole new level. Um, I really do I really do dislike it. I'm not going to lie. So. I don't know, it really feels like this map is just gimmicky, you know, there's, there's maps which use a few gimmicks which are okay, and it, it makes them sort of interesting, I still don't agree with the fact that they have to use gimmicks to be an interesting map, um, but this map is literally just gimmicky, like, I don't think there's anything good about the map apart from the fact it's just relies completely on gimmicks, like, it's gimmicky that it's got eight bases, it's gimmicky that there's rocks literally to move between any, t you know, between any base, there's literally rocks between every base, you know, rocks can be knocked down here between these bases, same on the other side, rocks between these bases, you know, there's rocks between every bases, there's even rocks that can be knocked down between the gold base, you know, right? You know, it's, it's really, really silly, I think it's just a little bit dumb, to be honest. So, um, this is the one map which is, um, really not growing on me at all. Out of the map pool. I think a lot of people sort of feel the same. And again, I think for a matchup like TVZ, it's actually quite abusable. Um, I think it is quite abusable for TVZ with the way you can abuse the rocks. So, yeah. Um, we'll see how uh, exactly Uzi Cody decides to play out in the long run. We'll see how things go as he does. Just lose the Reaper, actually. He's going to speed kicking in at the perfect moment. Just to catch that. Well, there's a couple of Hellions out and a couple more on the way. Looks though like we might have Cloak Banshee play coming up with this uh, Starport swaps onto that. And yes, it does. And we're going to see the Barracks actually coming down to the low ground. So interesting choice to move the Barracks down there. As there's that Cloak, there's that Banshee on the way. This Overlord for Solo, not really in a position which can come in and scout just yet. At least not scout the uh, Cloak Banshee. I guess it could if it takes a cut up northeast. Um, so yeah, actually maybe he can. But the question is, will he anytime soon? That being said, the map control for Solo is very, very good. It's going to be a very long, um, arduous trip around the entire edge of the map if Uzi Cody wants to try and get this Banshee across there unscouted. As we do see, first Hellions are going to be moving out onto the map. And just clean out a couple of these watchtowers to get rid of some of the map control. And that's definitely important to you if you want to get this Banshee across quickly and effectively without it being scouted again. That's um, a real important factor in here, this. As we see now, six Hellions moving across. There is an armory on the way down too, so it's going to be a bit of a hell about timing. For Uzi Cody to sort of uh, try and uh, utilize here at the start of this game. Rotron is only just now on the way up. Isn't ready just yet though. 
I hope this hellbat time is not going to do much good if these uh, rocks are down and if he can't actually get in towards the base of his opponent. So that's something he's got to kind of uh, try and buy time for right now. These queens have actually stopped working on them rocks. Here comes this banshee. As the hellbat's ready to go and well, there's currently absolutely no units. There's only queens and these queens are maybe in a little bit of trouble as well. Targeting that banshee momentarily. So here you go, hellbat's moving forward. There's one roach on the way out but so is actually supply blocked and what a bad time to be supply blocked. In fact, an awful time to be supply blocked. In fact, I mean, this could just be a game ending supply block. These Hellbats are going to close the distance. One single Roach is out here. Drones are going to start dropping. That Banshee's going to help out against that Roach. going to start helping against the Drones now as well. These Queens are getting lower and lower, so the Queens are going to start falling. And that makes a big difference in this as well. This Banshee now picking up six kills in total overall over here. A few more Roaches on the way out. Actually, these Queens have done a really good job of cleaning out these Hellbats. They've done way better than I thought they would. But still a lot of damage done. Six workers killed. Lots of lost mining time. And these queens are very, very low, and that does give Uzi Cody now an opportunity to maybe fly in and pick off a couple of those. Because he will actually catch a roach, kind of between, transferring between bases. This drone will go down, transferring between bases as well. This third base over here has absolutely no protection on it. Uh, one of these banshees will have to kind of pull back, but the other one will be able to come in. And that should just be a uh, very dead queen here in just a second, so... This third base is completely open to attack. The drone's going down over here at the same time. Some Hellions ready by into the main base now. And they've actually picked up three, four kills, five kills now. And of course the Banshee's doing damage at the same time. So hard to judge how many was the Hellions. They did get some kills and help out. But both Banshees fall at the very end of this. Actually a bit of a mistake by Uzi Cody. It allows Solo to really clean this up and go from there. So... We do see the third base coming in from Uzi Cody now. He's going to have that morphing into an orbital. And okay, he didn't end the game, but I think he's definitely put himself into a very good position. And he's actually going to be going into the Sky Terran style of play. The four star ports down, the fifth's coming up. He's going to play a Liberator Banshee here into the mid game. And this is something which we've seen a lot of lately from Terran players. It's becoming more and more and more popular. The idea being you dump your minerals into Hellions, you build Banshee Liberator. Liberators are very good against anything in the skies, and the Banshees are very good against anything on the ground. So it can be very frustrating and very difficult for the Zerg player to really deal with it. As we do see, again, Solo just holding whatever map control he can. An overlord up here, a Ling over there, a Ling on the watchtower. He's actually going to start taking down these rocks over here to give himself access towards the fourth base, down to the south side of the map. It's kind of difficult. I mean, which fourth base do you decide to take? Whichever one you take up here is still just, you know, one base across from this third base of the Terran. Over here is just one base across from the main base, so, you know, either fourth base is going to be rather tough to hold, actually, from Solo's perspective, as we're going to see him uh, working on these um, rocks over here, going to get rid of those in just a couple of moments, and again, we'll just open himself that pathway, as he's going to take the Southern Watchtower too, and just have some good creep spread moving out onto the map. Creep is one thing which Solo did uh, not get denied, really, by Uzi Koti's initial push, as we see the creep being lathered down by these queens, going to keep on pushing forwards, a couple of drones have, um, Fallen. And Banshee's just going to be chasing after them. A couple of roaches over here chasing after them. And again, just coming in and getting himself a uh, drone kill. And will be turned away here at the very end. Group Jim is again going to be pushing out onto the map. And as these Hellions, these Liberators, are going to be able to make their way through these rocks. Over to the left hand side here, this Banshee guy, Duro, coming over. And just going to be working its way against this. So Banshee's uh, going to work their way against this. Hellbats working their way through it. We have a couple more Banshees on the way up. We've got a couple more Hellions. We've got some Liberators coming out as well. SCVs are actually getting ready to already uh, actually come over and just repair one of these Banshees. Again, there's already a lot of Liberators on the map. And so these Mutalisks from Solo are really not going to do anything at all. They're very good at chasing the Banshees away. But they're going to get destroyed as soon as Liberators get in range of them. So these Mutalisks do have to be very, very careful right here. So you're going to see these Liberators turning and fighting. And then Banshees, uh, Mutalisks, sorry, do take... Quite a bit of damage here. And you're going to see another scan coming down. And these uh, Hellions starting to get some good damage done towards the front of this. Then Mutas getting pushed away. I was going to see the Liberators. Well, sieged up a little bit. A couple of these Banshees just coming in and chasing down these Queens. The Liberators are going to keep on sieging up as well. Continue to come forward. Queen's actually going to have a good time uh, working as these Banshees. Liberators need to keep on pushing for the siege. He doesn't want to siege up all of his Liberators, of course, because the more Liberators he sieges up, well, the more Liberators he sieges up, then the less he has to fight in the skies against the Mutalists and so on as well. One Cloak Banshee here is still doing a good job. However, it does now go down, and the Queens can begin to work their way against these Liberators. Corrupt is coming in too, and he will have to continue moving away. Alright, fourth base for Uzi Cody is coming in now as we see him still just kind of massing up into the Sky Army. 
We've got his, um, what, plus what? His plus two sky weapons already finished, so we're looking really good for him over there. As the hell he is again, the mineral dump for him in this game. Going to be able to continue moving around the map and just looking to run by. It's actually a hard map to run by on if these rocks aren't down. So, I mean, he can get into the fourth base easily. But other than the fourth base, I mean, even then, Solo should probably maybe just take these rocks down. Obviously, they can then be killed off again by the... Banshees, but we'll give him a little bit of time here where these Hellion run buys are not going to be something he has to worry about. Give him time to saturate that base, set up some psych defenses, and just sort of roll from there. There's a couple more Corruptors are on the way out. And these Corruptors are going to be coming up towards this right hand side, and they are actually going to pick off a couple of these Hellions, so them Hellions do fall. And as we have our uh, Terran just continue to expand all around the map. And he really does have um, just bases coming up everywhere. Now, actually. This, uh, what we call the initial 4th base, this is more the 5th base because it doesn't start get saturated just yet. This 4th base for Uzi Cody really does seem to be very close to this 4th uh, base of Solo and that's going to make things very nice for him to kind of attack forwards into this sort of position. As we have the Rook Rocks all going to be shut down here, however the Queens get locked out and that's going to be slightly problematic for Solo. And he has to uh, back away here, so Solo's just going to back away with these Queens. And he's going to be coming in, and he's actually going to try and take the center expansion as the gold, which, well, that might work out for him, maybe. Um, it's going to be interesting. It's the sort of position you don't really want to attack into, I guess, as a Terran, because it's, like, right out in the open. You'd rather kind of push around the edges of the map. That being said, with the Sky Army, that doesn't really matter so much. It's not like he's pushing with tanks and so on, so... Well, we'll see what happens. These Banshees currently working their way through these rocks. We do have, what, a bunch of Corruptors over here, but only 10 of them against 14 Liberators... I mean, they're going to need some crazy engagement. We have plus one ship weapons to start up for Uzi Cody now. He's also already got his plus two weapons on the sky up as well. We have these Hellbats coming in and Liberators. Couldn't decide what they want to do. A few of them will see jump over here. And uh, Queen already going down. The rest of them will start to fly in towards these uh, Corruptors. So I'll get some damage done. The Split's starting to come in on these Corruptors as well. I'm going to start the... See, the Liberator is actually doing a pretty good job. Viper comes out but doesn't have energy to really drop any Parasite bombs just yet. And Solo is losing his fourth base. And so he's going to be pushed away to his fourth base economy. Being pretty much limited to that gold central base. We do see these drones continuing to drop here. And that's actually a lot of work. As Kill Uzi Cody really set himself up nicely in game number two of this best of seven. Looking to full, uh, pull back into this. Really looking to pull back into this with... Um, for Romantic Gaming, as we see Zerglin's just backing away from that plant tree right now. As you see a few Hellbats in towards the central goal base as well, picking off some more workers. We still see Liberators and Banshees over here, and actually Solo is really just starting to completely fall apart now. These units moving towards the center, well, they might be able to clean up the Hellbats, but the Banshees are going to be hot on their tails as well, cleaning those up. Again, things not looking brilliant right now. There's uh, score cores in this center base, but well, actually the Banshee's doing a very good job of just picking away at this hatchery right now. Queen pops out for about a second before it gets taken down. And the score crawler not doing very much at all. So the central goal base will go down. There's Banshee's over here picking off workers. Uh, the Corruptors will win out this battle in the end, but again, these Banshee's been doing a really good job. Damage all over the place. The Liberator's going to go down now too. And so maybe Uzi Cody going to have to take a moment or two to just sort of... Um, you know, just sort of um, recover and just group together a little bit. Get his liberators and his banshees all joined up together at the same time. No hyperflight roaches on these banshees, meaning he can't escape these cryptos super easily. And we're going to see some hellions running by, hitting this base once again as it tries to be re-established. And Uzi Cody really just controlling the entire map right now. He's even got a planetary up here, which he's still not using. And I mean, he is just controlling the entire map as hellions run by. There's enough hellions here to realistically just shut down. Well, all of this mining on this base as well, and Solo's already only on 38 workers, and that is getting lower and lower once again. Now down to 33, now down to 31, and dropping even further, below the 30s now. As we'll see this Hellion run by. Okay, it's expensive, it's lots of Hellions to throw away, but at the same time, the minerals are something which... Well, actually, Uzi could, could kind of do with right now, he's actually a little bit mineral starved. As we see these uh, Hellions just getting kicked away at here. And these Roaches and Lings are going to join up together. Corruptor's going to come up to this top right. They might be able to, I guess, caustic spray down this plant tree, which is going to be nice. If he'll get rid of a base on the map. It's not the end of the world for our Terran player. He's got plenty of other bases to work with. But hey, it's one step towards um, something for Solo, I guess. I mean, it's just tough. I mean, this is a very difficult game to come back from from Solo's perspective. If it's possible at all, which I personally don't think it is. He needs something like, what, some crazy, like, parasitic bombs or so? He needs, like, parasitic bomb, fungal, corrosive bile combos. But it's just not happening, you know? There's just one Viper out, there's 
Ravager's been doing Festus. He's just not going to get up everything he needs really here to really be able to fight against this. His Banshee's doing a lot of damage. Liberators will unsiege and fight against these Corruptors. And again, just see what they can get doing. And even if the Liberators go down, they're going to trade fairly well. Banshee will probably pick up this base and leave. A Sula now down to 22 workers, 21 workers even. As Hellions are going to run by once again, look to hit another base. And I mean, this is just a slow, painful death for our Zerg player. And as you see, these Hellions running by. And how many, how low can you go, I guess, with the drone count? 13 is going to be the count when he taps out of the game. And music Cody ties up this series. Just a second here as we go into game number three. To the bottom right hand side of the map, it's going to be our pink Zerg player from Root Gaming. Let's hear it if you're going to be cheering on. Jim Rising, looking to put his team back into the lead after the initial victory from Solo here today. Uh, as to the bot top left side of the map from Romantic Gaming, it's Uzi Cody, uh, Teal, Terran player. So, we will see who um, comes up next, uh, who, who, who kind of comes out ahead here. So we're actually going to see the Proxy Rax player kicking in from Uzi Cody. This is very aggressive, like 13 racks, 13 racks, 13 racks. Man, it seems, it's been a long time since we said like 11, 11, but this is like 13, 13, 13. Uzi Cody has been this player, I think, too, multiple times this season, has thrown out a couple of aggressive build orders here and there. And so, we'll see what he tries to go for. I mean, we see what he's trying to go for here. Let's see if it works out for him. This triple racks player getting set up. And ready to go here in just a couple of moments time. And well, the Overlord initially from Jim Ryzen is not really going to be able to go in a direction to spot these barracks. So this is not ideal right from the start for Jim. He's not really going to spot this super early. And these barracks which are on the way up. Well, they're going to start rallying Marines in towards the natural expansion and so on very soon here as well. So I'm going to see one Marine on the way up, another Marine on the way up as well. And third marine will be on the way up too. So, um, again, lots of marines going to be big all in. And the thing is, Jim Ryzen just has no idea about it. He's not preparing against something like this at all. And he's not going to go near enough with this overlord to see it either. So he's really not going to see this until it's in his natural expansion. Um, and, I mean, he might even start up, if he starts up drones, I mean, he should start up some zerglings, right? But it's, it's going to be tough. There's going to be how many, what, like four, three, four marines when he first comes in here? Three marines and three SCVs. It's going to be very difficult. He's going to have to immediately start building the spine crawlers. As he comes in here, Uzi Cody has not been spotted just yet. He's spotted now. The bunker's spotted. And these marines are on the ramp. So this is where it begins. Jim Ryzen has to find a way to start doing something about this. As we see more marines coming in. Drones being pulled. He does the way he's kind of setting up on the high, on the high ground. He does allow himself to get a bit surrounded from multiple angles. He does pull back down to the low ground. Now he gets surrounded by drones. In fact, he did. But not much damage actually done in the end as drones coming through once again. Good surround, good mineral walk there to get through those marines. But already four drones going down. Jim Rising still pulling drones. Eight workers lost and right now. Uzi Cody looking as though he might be able to make this happen. Because he's got a bunker which can be completed on the high ground. He's still got a couple of SCVs. These marines will fight that queen no problem. Actually that queen going to not bother with the bunker. Going to come down to low ground protect its queen buddy. Queen's got to stick together in these hard times. You see a few seconds popping out. That bunker will be cancelled. And Uzi Cody, well, he's not done enough just yet. It's 13 workers apiece. And he's the aggressor. He's the one that really does have to make something happen here in the next couple of moments. Here's uh, Marines coming forward. Got the Lings going down. Continuing moving forward here. Drones have to be pulled trying to protect those Queens. And you're going to see the Drones getting good surround here. Could really stop these Marines from doing too much more. The Drones are falling now down to 11 workers against the 13. Now down to 10 and 9. And Uzi Cody is still getting damage done. These couple of SCVs repairing each other. Keep themselves alive. As uh, Zygmunds will come in and help to take them down. That one Queen here for Jim Rising. Back and away now. Four workers down. Can he make something happen as well? Oh, Uzi Cody obviously feels victory. And I suppose the SCVs in. That'll be enough. Jim Rising taps out. And Roman D Gaming take the lead here today. Introduce our players for the TVT to the bottom left hand side representing Root Gaming. Let's hear it if you're cheering on Kalazur. I don't know why I just tried to do a bit of a ball. Let's not talk about that one. To the upper right, our teal Terran player. Sorry guys, didn't realize these guys were trying to match each other's colors. From Roman D Gaming to the top right hand side of the map is our teal Terran player. It is Uzi Cody. Uzi Cody. I wonder if it's Uzi Cody or Uzi Cody. Probably Uzi Cody because whenever I try and say things which I'm unsure on, it's usually the opposite of what I'm actually attempting to say. So it always seems to um, work out like that. So 
we get set up and get ready to go into game number four. For now, it's just been Rax Gas from both players. So Rax Gas from both as we set up into this and look to see what the build orders will be. Second Rax from both. Whoa. Wow. Kalazur. That's a bit of a weird set. I mean, the second Rax hidden from Uzi Cody. Second Rax invades from Kalazur. Both players really want to go into two Rax Reaper here very early on in this game. And... Well, 2 Reaper against 2 Reaper can get interesting. It comes down to very much so to control and who controls it better. As we see the first Reaper starting up in that production tab on that barracks, getting ready to go across the map here. We do have an SCV coming across the map from Uzi Cody to try and scout, but he's not going to get much information. He is not going to see that second Rax. However, he will see the depot at the front. And that second depot is a little bit faster than your usual expansion, I'd say. Because usually you would save up, build this command center, then the second depot. So maybe that tips him off a little bit as to what this might be. And do you see this SCV moving away then as we have the Ripper just coming down, checking around, looking for that SCV. He wants to try and find it. He does find it now over here, so he will be able to kill this off. And that's really important because that actually denies Uzukodi the information on whether this is another Reaper, whether it's a reactor, whether there's a Marine on the way up. That's a really good scouting denial from Kalazur so far. As we do see the first uh, Reaper of Uzi Cody just sitting over here. Both players with a second Reaper now out and beginning to push across the map as Kalazur is, I think, taking the first hit there. Both players dropping down grenades. Kalazur, though, he's going to lose this Reaper. So he loses that fight. He's coming in with his second Reaper now, but he's going to get caught off guard again, surely. As there's two Reapers there, and now he sees this. So Kalazur, Diana Reaper, he'll have to take the defensive stance now in this game. As he's already dropped a factory back at home. And we do see both players with the expansion starting up too. It's actually going to be the reactor from Uzi Cody, so he's going to move away from the uh, two Rax Reaper into a reactor. As Kellers is still making do two Reapers at a time, and that factory on the way up as well. We'll see what the transition is. As he's going to use the high ground to try and get an extra shot or two off. He's going to try and drop around a grenade or so. He needs another Reaper, and he needs it now. These Reapers are in his base, and he's going to have to just pull away until he's ready to really deal with this. He'll have his uh, cease, uh, factory delayed mining. Now that Reaper getting a little bit low for him, but now he's actually going to have his opponent cornered here. It's actually been a very cute little move by Kalazur, getting his opponent trapped in here a little bit. However, his opponent does start to win out that fight. Kalazur takes down two of the Reapers, though, at the cost of one. And so he evens up the resources lost in this game. Both players now losing two Reapers and an SCV. As Kalazur still has three against two, so he should be able to fight this. The grenade comes down, and he will just be forced back. And the game will stabilize slightly. Kalazur for Hel Helene already on the way up. Starport starting as well. Still making Reapers, whereas we see Marines on the way out now from Uzi Cody. We also see Uzi Cody going into that factory too. So a bit of a later factory, but does have more Marines. But that means Kalazur's got Reapers. I mean, Reapers are pretty darn good, man. So let's see how this plays out. Kalazur now going to go into his reactor and his tech lab to set up onto the barracks in towards the mid-game with Stimpak, lots of Marines, and of course the Medivacs as well to go kind of just very standard Marine tank build. Kalazur comes up this ramp, he drops a grenade as he engages those Reapers initially. Gonna come up here again as well. Oh, needs to be careful. That Marine's getting a lot of damage done. Two Reapers fall. And Kalazur not getting very much done with this at all. It is a difficult map to use Reapers on once it gets to this point where there's enough units out to just deny them from ever getting into your base. And I mean, this is enough units, to be honest, from Uzi Cody. More than enough. So I just see a Widowmine gonna take the, uh, take point on top of this ramp as well. And that could pick off a Hellene if he's not careful. He's actually gonna go up the side. And that's really smart by Kalazur, even very smart, or slightly lucky, as he will avoid the Widow Mine because of it. Both players have started up Stimpak as we get into this TVT. Things really start uh, rolling in for the mid-game. Stimpak on the way, Marine Production. We see Viking on the way from Uzi Cody, from Kalazur. He's straight into a medevac here. Tank as well on the way up. Both players, similar work counts, 35 to 35. So right now, dead even, of course, that'll change every now and then with whenever there's... Um, you know, whenever that next SCV finishes, basically. So do you see the two Reapers for Uzi Cody? Just going to take some map control, which I do like the idea of. I mean, these Reapers at this point are not going to be super useful anymore. And so better just send them out on the map and just watching for drops and so on rather than do anything else. Because just got the same idea, you know, at this point, his Reapers are going to be less and less useful. So may as well come in, try and get an SCV kill or two. And I mean, you know, just make the most of these Reapers at the very end of this. And it's going to be one less SCV kill. And that will be that. He actually also got a good amount of splash damage on his opponent here. As this uh, Reaper actually going to just come in straight up and scout the main base. I'm uh, going to just look to see everything over here. There's one Reaper down here. Still positioned just to spot drops. As we will see that Reaper going down. And again, overall, Kalazur did a little bit more there, I think. Um, three workers killed is nice. Work can still even, though. Kalazur, the third, first player to drop a third command center. And that comes down over here in the main base. Reaper going to move around as well. 
And that's Tim going to be finishing up very shortly. The Medivac going to drop Marines over in towards the natural or so in the very near future. So Medivac going to be coming in here, but there's already a lot of Marines in position. Kalazur then going to change direction. Might be able to just delay the CC or something right now. I mean, uh, there's lots of units nearby. He'll have to stop him uh, dropping. And in fact, he already had that command, the stop command on. And so he only unloaded four Marines, lifts up, gets away, delays the third CC by, I mean, a few seconds, but still. Every couple of seconds you can, as we see Kalazur might be loading up for a big drop now. I mean, three medivacs on the map, full of marines and a couple of tanks. Well, there's definitely a lot of possibility to just drop in here and try and get damage done, but so far Uzi Kuti is very well spread out in this main and in this natural expansion. We see him adding on a few extra barracks, but, I mean, look at this, the siege tank spread is pretty good, and, well, the question is, is Kalazur just going to have too much right, you know, all at once in one location? I'm not too sure if he will have too much all at once, because honestly, you look at this, and Uzi Kuti has plenty of marines, he's got the tanks, however, we have just seen um, him unload, loading up one of these siege tanks, as the medevac will go down. Uh, Widow Mine is going to try and get off on a few of those marines, we do see a stim in from both players, then tanks to the back, well, it is going to be Kim Sakuri who comes out ahead of this one. He actually comes out of this 20 supply up, both players with the extra barracks on the way down now, going up to 5 racks apiece. Combat shields first finishing for Kalazir, finish but again, that was not a good drop from him. He did not get the damage do done, what he want, you know, which he was aiming to get done with this. He kind of looked ahead, saw the situation, went for it anyways, and just judged it wrongly. He did not get the damage he wanted there. And Uzi Kodi does take the slight supply lead because of it, and will try and move out into the map to get some more damage done. So moving out here, looking to see what he can get done as these couple of Vikings, these couple of medevacs, are going to be just coming across and there's them marines as well now moving forwards now there is tanks for Kalazur so you can start setting up a position where you can begin to go sort of you know, kite, you know, kite his opponent's units um, a couple of vikings if you could get them that'd be great I mean get rid of the air control of his opponent always something you're going to be wanting to try and do here because these tanks will be positioned towards the front and well it'll be Kalazur who is struggling for position right now here in game number four and who's it Cody up in supply up in position Third base landed, starting the mine, his upgrade starting to take the lead as well, his plus one armor starts up, he's got air control to use as well, so he can move the tank forwards and start working on a supply depot, for example. He's got everything he really needs here, however, one of them fighters is not fighting, and a little mistake like that suddenly throws away one of your advantages, and all of a sudden it's something that you don't have to work with any longer. These marines are going to commit though, they want that viking kill, they're going to get it, but he still takes a big shot onto his uh, second viking, so he's still not quite able to fight this here. Loads of one of his medevacs just gonna pull back apparently. Who's the code? You're gonna give Kalazur the benefit of the doubt this time around, just back away and just give up on this pressure. So these units you know, gonna be pulling back towards the upper right hand side. Scan from Kalazur just confirming his opponent's third base is up and running now as he gets ready to drop in towards the natural. And well, there is a lot of space here where there is not a turret to kind of punish this. And there's also some space where there is a turret, and we're going to see already actually use a pretty picks up on this. He has a marine stun, stem into position, these tanks are in position too, these medivacs have to get away from that turret. And as we do see, 10 workers already killed off here, great damage done by using Cody. Their medivacs will fall, but 10 workers killed for his fairly okay with a few marines as well at the same time. And so using Cody will lose a bunch of workers, that being said, Kalazur is still only even on workers, so it's sort of damage which he needed to catch up with. His opponent most of them he needed damage done to take a bit of a lead here. Go into that units tab, we'll see Uzi Kodi has a two tank advantage, even on Marines, even on Vikings, even in every other way. Just a couple tank lead for our teal Terran player to the top right hand side. He again has them upgrades rolling in as well, already plus two, uh, 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 plus two rep inside. His plus one arm is already finished. Everything is rolling along here very nicely for Uzi Kodi. We'll see a couple of sensor towers set up, and that's going to help Kalazur a lot in defending against drops here in the relatively near future on Dusk Towers. So he should be fairly safe right now as you see him again looking to drop and so far I'd say these drops have been a mix of success and failures. I mean the first drop, the big doom drop, really didn't do anything. The second drop over there, he killed 10 workers and he lost the units but uh, it was okay. But yet to see a drop really being kind of outstandingly amazing for Kalazur basically. Yes, this Widow of Mine is in a great position to shut this down and that is a dead medevac. And again, drop has done nothing. And this continued defense from Uzikoti is continuing to just put himself into great positions here. As he will win this fight over here with the extra armor upgrade. Fat Marine just uh, taking advantage of the armor upgrade lead while he had it for a couple of seconds. And again, that plus two, plus two already coming up to being... Well, the plus two weapons are so very close to being done for Uzi Cody. The plus two armor is a pretty decent lead as well. And that's something Kalazur will have to try and just work around. He'll have to find a way to just work around this. And 
Just find other ways to do this. We use this Marine Simulator to the right hand side from Uzi Kotti. Just looking to see what you can get up to. Gonna come in here, start fighting against all of these Marines. These Marines are dropping. Actually, Zerg gonna lose a whole bunch of these. As this medevac is gonna go down as well. Oh my god, he saves on two health just the very end there. Sorry, misclicked on the minimap. He saves just the end, realizes it boosts it away and gets it away from those few Marines, which are still in the hunt though. And ooh, there's a Marine here. Is he gonna turn and fight the medevac? Oh no, he doesn't get it. And the rest of the army will come in to defend it. Medevac stays alive. Cause it. Cute little players there to just keep a medevac alive on the uh, on the strings of life, as you see. Because the other one being aggressive now, out onto the map with lesser upgrades, with what a lower tank count as well. Okay, he's actually caught up in tanks, so he's actually caught up in a lot of ways. The armies are looking very similar right now, out on the uh, units tab. As you do see, there's going to be a battle of positioning now. Who takes the better position? Who takes the better fight? And you'll see Kalazer's Tim Forwards actually. He's going to force his opponent's tanks to unload. He'll take a volley as he backs away. And you'll see that one Viking is actually the only air control in the game by a player. And does lie on the side of Kalazer, who will just use it as a way to kind of keep vision. And just use it as a way to kind of maybe poke away his opponent's medevacs over time. That's Kalazer with uh, a few more Marines. And you never see Shank coming into play. Gonna be sent up into this as this Viking comes in. It's just gonna be kind of turning these uh, medevacs away right now. So turns the medevacs away. Here's a Cody is actually lifted up completely in Kalazur. Well, he's gonna have to defend right now as these tanks are gonna start taking some heavy fire. It looks as though the fight to the left hand side will be won by Kalazur. He actually comes in, he takes out a lot of the tanks of his opponent. Cody is not gonna take the fight we were just talking about. He's not take, gonna win the position in war. He's not gonna win the engagement. And just like that, Kalazur. He's going to be able to take down this third base. He's going to deny the fourth from ever coming up as well. And he's going to turn what looked at points in this game to be a bit of a shaky uh, scenario for him. He's going to turn that into a victory here. He takes down these SCVs. He's going to lift these tanks and uh, just keep simming on forwards. These tanks will, uh, Yuzu Cody will try and siege up to buy himself some time and get some good damage done and try and hold a position with Kalazur Sims forwards. He targets down the tanks. GG. Game number four goes the way of gaming and Kalazur. And we're all. In fact, it's almost, it's, it's, it's amazing compared to Invader V1, like, honestly, I was not a fan of this initial version of Invader, but Invader V2 looks fantastic. Some of the changes he's made, just changing some of the positions of the bases and so on, and some of the pathing, keeps the concept of the map very, very much the same, but fixes a lot of the issues with it, so that's really, really cool, and, well, hopefully we see that in the map pool at some point. Guys, to the top left hand side of the map from Romantic Gaming looking to put his team back into the lead here in this best of seven. It is our Blue Zerg player. Let's hear it if you're going to be cheering on Denver. This is the bottom left hand side. We have our Red Terran player from Root Gaming. Ladies, gentlemen, I present to you Kalazur. Keller God. It's a good look at fun. It's called at the start of this series. Or start of this game, I should say. Sorry. Again, a few of these kind of very standard words mixed up uh, all over the place today. Just I uh, need to focus on what I'm saying a little bit more. Apologies. Again, we'll be back with the stream tomorrow, guys, from midday BST. So that's uh, 1 p.m. CEST. We'll probably be starting while GSL is still live, but uh, you can come and join us during the GSL breaks or during the, um, you know, or, or after GSL. Um, come and join us as we will have the Doyu Star Masters once again here on the stream. It's going to be live from 1 p.m. CEST. It'll be our only stream tomorrow because of the WCS Challenger Leagues that will be playing out. And so we will not, uh, we're will not we not allowed to stream those, and so we'll not be live tomorrow evening. We will be live on Saturday. We have the Doyu Star Masters. We have the SCT Improved Team League. It's actually the Doyu Star Masters monthly finals, and I'm told Junair Green Wings will be playing. So players like Mario and so on might be turning up. Don't think SKT1 and KT will be for the sole reason that they have Star League Finals to go and support their players in. So, um, it should be very good, though. I'm really looking forward to it. It should be a lot of good players. It's kind of basically like a $1,000 uh, online cup. So, really looking forward to that. And that will be on Saturday. We kick off the first day of the Doyu Star Masters monthly finals. And we've got Copa America on Saturday as well. And on Sunday, we've got Team League. We've got DreamHack qualifiers and more. So, busy end of the week here for us, guys. Make sure you hit the follow button on the stream. See when we go live again in the future. And if you're enjoying the content and want to keep up to date with what's going on. I know I say that a lot. Like, it's one of my favorite go-to phrases. Like, make sure to hit the follow button if you're enjoying the stream and see when we go live in the future. But it's so true. It's such a great way to just... I mean, I I, I have end, endless times have I got on Twitch to watch something and... 
I've, I've found something that's on because I'm following the stream or, you know, I've, I've gotten, you know, I used to have email notifications on too. I don't know why they stopped actually, but I used to have email notifications on and they used to kind of tell me like, oh my God, like this, this tournament is just starting. Perfect. Let's get online. Let's watch it. So um, it is a good way to check out. And it also lets me boast about my follower account as well, you know, you know big, big deal, right? We just hit 8,000 followers earlier today. So thank you to all you awesome people who are already following the stream for helping us reach that milestone. Next step. 9,000 will be over 9,000 soon. No, I mean, you just can't say that without sort of, um, <laughs> you can't sort of say that 9, the number 9,000 without making that joke, can you? <sighs> Sorry, guys. It's going to be aggression out of Denver. He's got a pneumatized carapace coming up. He's got lings and a bane and nest on the way down. He's going to go very aggressive, very all in at the start of this game. As we see from Kelazer, well, he's going straight into tanks. But I'm not sure how much the tanks will help out against this. I wonder if he brings his queens across the map too. Is Zerglund's initially going to find that Reaper? And he will just about kill that off. Grenade, avoided. Good, avoids that splash damage. Mauling is on the way up. Bane and Nest is um, down. And again, we'll see them being started morphing shortly. Queens are coming across the map as well. How many more dropping overlords do we have? Just one. So it's going to be kind of Queen, Ling, Bane at the front to try and break this position. Try and break this wall. Another dropping overlord coming in as well. So maybe a few Banes are going to get dropped on top of this. It's really going to be all about sort of breaking this tank down. The sooner he breaks this tank, the better. He's actually going to have Ling streaming over here. He's going to drop these Lings to the other side. That tank's loaded up. That's not where it wants to be right now. This tank wants to be in here defending. As we're going to see this Bane bus getting ready to come forwards towards the front. The Lings have to uh, load up once again. A bit of an air blocker there. A bit of a weird one. Again, lots of air blockers on this map, which do sometimes get in the way of things. And as we do see, lots of dropping overlords coming in. So Kelsey has to be careful. Scans the main base, sees that there's no queen there. And well, everything is literally everything is loading up right now and off the way in towards the main. He's going to wait for these last two overlords. He's just going to actually just drop over to the other side of the wall. So here we go, Kellers. Uh, God, do something. Pick, decide what you want to do. He is going to go onto the other side of the wall. He's going to actually go up into towards the main base. Here we go. Marines are going to start um, unload, uh, kind of firing onto this here. Queen's coming in as well as Lings are coming in. There's Balins in this overlord in the back. He's not unloading that until it's uh, completely necessary. He's unloading the Balins on top of the SCVs. Kalazur taking a high amount of damage here as Zerglings are going to try and break through the front and they will get through the front. Zerglings on top of the tanks here as well. And now the Zerglings have broken through the front. Reinforcements can get, get in here very easily as Queens are keeping this uh, wall on the, the main base down and as we do see another Balin coming in going off there some on something Queens will be able to transfuse they actually get lifted more Banes on the way and he's going to chase after those tanks here as SCVs are going to be in this uh, you know in this in amongst this as well Queens want to get rid of that Viking the sooner they get rid of the Viking the sooner he can keep his overlords alive which is uh, important here as he lifts up once again, Overlord with Queens in is very low. Ling streaming in towards the natural expansion. Queens. Right, he's actually going to load a Banes once again, which has been, would be very useful. Oh no, the Queens! The Queens! The Queens have gone! Well, that's a big loss there all of a sudden for Denver. Because a big pick off as there's still Banes in these Overlords. Where are they going to land? Are they going to find any SCVs? He wants it. He really wants it. He's actually going to start unloading on some of these Marines. He's still got, what, two Banes ready to go in this? And Kalazir doesn't know how many Banes are left. So the Galazer is still running around. He's actually, oh my god, Kalazer's lost his natural. The natural has been killed off. He did not lift it. A huge mistake by Kalazer. That is game changing. That changes absolutely everything in this. Oh my god. Well, this thing got, got very interesting. It's Kalazer down on one base in this TVZ. And Denver, he's droning up. He's making more queens at home. He's injecting once again. And he's got more overlords on the way up. He's got a carapace started as well. And actually, I kind of like the idea from Denver just to back away with these overlords. Just back away with these Banelins. You know, just, you know, he killed the command center. That is huge. That is so huge. Can't even express how, how big a deal that is. As these Zerglings are all going to be joining up together. A few Banelins will unload and load into the healthy overlord. I mean, the chance of a Banelin drop here could still get some damage done if he can sneak around the back. That's exactly what he's looking for here. As we do see the three tanks moving out onto the map. And these Zerglings, you have to be careful running away there. Tanks do not quite get a shot off. As Kellers, uh, if he's busy with that micro, might not realize this overlord coming in towards his main base. This could be goodbye to a few SCVs because he is very busy over here. And that's exactly what Denver wants. He wants him to keep on lifting all of this up. As here we go. Oh, he just pulls away in time. Kellers, uh, why are you so good? As we're going to see these bins just have to drop down. And he'll uh, hit. Well, actually, that's a big connection, but it's just not quite going to be enough um, to kill it off with only one bin and connecting. Uh, as we see now, Kellers, uh, rebuilding his CC. Getting back into this game, but third base on the way from Denver, and again, if Denver doesn't take much damage from these tanks, he's got so much potential here. As, oh, I love this counter-attack drop once again as well. I mean, okay, there's actually the Queens, oh my god, the Queens are actually being dropped onto the tanks to help out against this. 
Obviously, they're not as mobile as those medivacs, but it will force them to lift as this drop into the main. Well, there's not enough units here to really defend against this many Zerglings. Denver needs to start dropping, though. And SCVs have to be very careful. So many SCVs on low health actually means that realistically here, these SCVs are all going to go down. And Kelozer is in a lot of trouble right now. He's killing off some drones over on this side of the map with these tanks still. But the main story is in the main base because Kelozer is losing all of his workers trying to get into a corner here. But there's only so far you can go on these SCVs on such low health. They're all going to start going down and Denver is going to make this happen for Romandy Game. And he's going to take them 3-2 up. And man, if Romandy win this, they are really going to screw up the, st the storyline of Group B. Or I guess not screw it up, but keep the storyline Group B really going in terms of who the heck is going to make it out of this group in this team league. Because no one really knows just yet. These tanks still over here doing a lot of damage. Well, Kalazir is killing off all of this production. I mean, there's literally only these tanks and these medivacs on the map, and the Zerglings come in. That really should be Kalazir just kind of done for now. I don't think there's a way he can actually continue. I mean, maybe with perfect tank micro. As Queens are actually going to go down in this overall. Big loss for Denver. He's actually on 54 supply against 15. It will be GG. Denver takes it, and oh my. It's ZVZ on Ulrena to try and finish this series. I mean, what a match this could be for Romandy Gaming if they could take the victory, but they've got one major block in their way. Who do you even introduce first? Let's introduce what could be the block from Root Gaming to stop Romandy Gaming taking this series. To so the bottom left, it's our blue Zerg player. It is Hydra. To the top left, opening with a pool first here from Romandy Gaming. Our red Zerg player is Denver. Pool. Gas. Double extracted trick actually. Is that just a 12 pool? Um, is that just a 12 pool and I'm just being really dumb with my timings here and how what I'm thinking about? It can't be a 12 pool, right? Like, is it? I, I don't even know right now. My mind's um, a little broken. Lots of Denver hype coming into the chat. Denver hype from Winter, Denver hype from Shade Artos, Denver hype from Yost in the chat as well. Lots and lots of Denver hype here. This will be a few seconds and. and um, then we'll see what else from Denver here very soon. Four, six Zerglings and a Queen. It's a pool first from Hydra though, so Hydra not, you know, gonna get away with this. It, it wasn't a 12 pool, right? It was like a 14 pool, I think. I think, um... Yeah, I think, um... I think I was being a bit silly, yeah. I, I think I saw it go up to 14, and I knew it wasn't a 12 pool, but I was just second-guessing myself. So it is a uh, 14 pool here, out of um, Denver. As we see Hydra going into some things of his own, and economy is very similar, the hatchery timing is very similar, and never played taking gas until just now. Where Hydra, actually no, he just extracted tricks, so actually never played going gas just yet. Just going to be slow links for a while here in this game, slow links and queens to defend early on. As we see the first links coming in for Denver, but there's the links for Hydra. And we'll see Denver actually turn the fight, gets the first shot off in here in this engagement. However, now one of his links falls very low, he'll work away against that hatchery a little bit more. A couple more links coming in, he has to turn, he wants to get the better engagement onto this. As he'll spread out once again, he has got kind of, you know, kind of gets into a natural concave by attacking the hatchery. Which is really nice for him as he gets another couple of hits off where his opponent does not. Hydra having to pull drones down into this, and so this earlier spawning in pool for Denver is slowly playing off here. He's also starting up a spine crawler to stay safe, but as he starts up three more drones, He'll even up the work account, and so things are going to be, um... Yeah, things are going to be sort of, um... Coming together a little bit, as you see these Zerglings coming in, wrapping around that Queen. Queen is going to be falling here. Queen goes down, that's a nice little snipe from Denver, and with the spine crawler, And actually he's going to buy some time with these Zerglings, pulling them away to the right-hand side. I really love that. Stops Hydra from coming across the map, and... I mean, he gives him time to get a few more Lings out, get his spine to the low ground if he wants it. Get his Queens out too, and he can block on the ramp if necessary. He's going to actually just bring the spine to the low ground. So he feels very confident about his position now, as we can see him with eight more Lings on the way up too. And he is still just a couple of drones behind us, so has to be careful about that. But he does have a spine crawl to keep him safe, as we're still only just now actually seeing players starting to invest into gas. That gas now coming up for Hydra. Because these Queens, well, they get a lot of damage done against these Zerglings as they run up in towards the main base. And Denver just needs to turn them few Zerglings around to help out over here. He's actually going to lose a drone or two, which is something he probably can't really afford. Two drones lost, and that's something he can't really afford. He's already down a little bit in the work account. He's still down right now by six workers. As some Zerglings come in, they do get that Zergling kill there. And we do see a couple of Lings in the natural as well, just being annoying for Hydra. As that Spine will come towards the front and help to defend. But Hydra, up seven workers right now, and he's going straight into his Rotron as well, but his gas is taken. Probably going to see something very similar from Denver as he gets his own gases set and ready to go here. But just playing a little bit of catch-up, basically. A little bit behind on the drone count. And the way things have just turned out here, basically Denver's just fallen a little bit behind at the start of this game. 
So both players are going to skip the circle speed. They're going to go straight into the Roach Roar in here to start off game number six. And we'll see if Hydra... Actually, I mean, with, with the 200 gas in the bank, Hydra could just turn this into a bit of aggression. You know, make a whole bunch of Roaches right now. And move across the map aggressively as we do see actually though Denver doing some good damage. Picks off another queen over here. Will come in and will most importantly in a moment or two see that Roach Roar and see the gas that his opponent has got mined. And that's going to be really important for him as he comes in. I mean this queen cannot kill off these signals in time. And Hydra actually starts to lair. I wonder if that's a bit of a fake out if he actually wants to lair. I guess he probably actually wants it. Um, as the Zerglings, one of them left here, does go down. We did see a few roaches coming out though. So Denver, how well prepared is he to deal with this? We see already a couple of queens coming to the front. He'll with a couple of lings once again. His own roach run is on the way once he gets it. He will have quite a lot of roaches out. But, I mean, this attack path is so quick for Hydra to move along. And that's exactly what we're seeing right now. These roaches are going to be coming all the way up this left-hand side. And so Denver going to have to stay defensive here. Going to have to use his, his spine crawler, and he will be a little bit later to take his third base because Hydra has already started his third hatchery. It feels though Denver a little bit, um, a little bit um, hopeful in taking the third hatchery here right now. Um, that should get cancelled before the roaches of Denver come in here. Well, maybe not actually. Maybe not. Okay, it will be. There we go. <laughs> I started to doubt myself, and then he, um, then, then I was actually true. As we're going to see, actually uh, Denver, well, even an opportunity to fight a few of these roaches on their own. Queen actually gets the transfuse off as well, and Denver takes a bit of a good fight here. We'll turn around, and oops, well, one roach is not going to be free, so unfortunately for him, that's not going to work out. There's actually four here for Hydra still, as he'll maybe think about running by, or maybe he's going to come across the map to defend. As here we go, these roaches are going to start running in. Hydra doesn't have much on the map just yet, considering four of his roaches are on the wrong side of the map. Uh, but Denver, for some reason, has stopped some of his units in the middle. He's losing a couple of queens up here as well. And just a few mistakes with control around the map for Denver, as Hydra... Continues to just take leads and advantages in this game. He's got Roach Speed and plus one already started. And again, it's been a lead from the start from Hydra. It really has been. Let's see these Roaches just pulling back home. I'm just going to be coming in towards the natural expansion. A few Roaches to the right-hand side here. As this third hatchery is going to be finishing up very shortly as well. Queen going to be working this way against this Overlord. So Queen working against the Overlord here. Overlord just trying to get away, but will eventually go down. There's lots of creep spread for Hydra to work with. As he wants to try and move through this position and, well, maybe time to just pull back and maybe work his way through these central rocks if he wants to move through the map and utilize his plus one upgrade time and advantage, which he's going to have very, very soon in this game. See a couple of crows of bars coming down. These roaches continue to just trade around the place here. And as you see, a few more ravagers coming in and, well, Hydra, can he really push through this sort of choke point here? He's going to try to. His plus one isn't here just yet, but he does have roach speed. Crows of bars will land on roaches and on the spine crawler. Crows of bars coming onto the, um... Well, coming on to kind of the choke point from Denver, but it's just not going to be enough. And uh, that spine crawl is uh, so low, but isn't down just yet. It should go down in a moment, though, as Denver is going to have to tap out. And Hydra is going to take us to a game number seven, guys. Tips of NGN for map seven of this. To the bottom right hand side, our Blue Zerg player from Root Gaming. Ladies and gentlemen, let me hear it if you're cheering on Hydra. And to the bottom left hand side from Romandy Gaming, our Red Zerg player is going to be Hate Me. Let's see what these guys are going to come up with here on Ruins of Endian. Again, if you're enjoying the stream, guys, and you want to help support the team league, support the stream, support the content I'm producing, you can subscribe to the channel. $5 a month allows you to um, use the emotes, you get to play in the sub-tournament, you get priority on viewer games, you get replay pack. You can also donate directly as well if you prefer just a one-off support package or so. And you can also... Join us on Patreon if you want to customize the amount you support us with each month. And there's a whole set of Patreon rewards available too at patreon.com slash wardy. Or you can find all of those links to do all of that with underneath the stream on your Twitch pages. As we get set up, ready to go into this game. It's been a hatchery first from Hate Me. Pool first from Hyder, playing this a little bit safe. Pool, safe. Pool hatch though, so... Still pretty fast hatchery behind this. Not necessarily, you know, not looking to really be aggressive. I mean, he'll probably make a few links, but he probably won't be too successful because successful because of the hatchery and pool. Coming up relatively quickly from Hate Me, he shouldn't have too much of an issue against this. It'll be sort of the same as the last game where Denver sort of was able to attack and get a bit of damage onto the hatchery. But in the reality of it all, you know, at the end of the day, he didn't really get any major damage done there. And as we'll see how to start to move across the map with these Zerglings. We're going to see the, um... 
Zerglins coming in here from Hydra. Actually going to just focus right from the start here on working down these rocks. Probably so you can just go into very fast roaches. And upon seeing this from Hate Me with this Overlord, I think very correctly decides to change his mind about what he wants to do. And he'll either go into roaches or very fast mutalisks here as his follow up. He is going to commit to Ling Speed, which would be very suggestive of, um, of mutas probably. With roaches, if you're just going to go into them straight away without having any chance of aggression, then you're probably going to end up with a, um, you're probably going to end up with a, um, you know, you're probably going to end up just um, not getting link speed just because you don't need it. Um, Hydra's actually going to be the one that drops down the lair here very quickly. It's a very fast lair from Hydra. Intrigued to see what this turns into. Third hatch is on the way from Hate Me. So very different builds here at the start of game number seven, which will decide this team league match. You're going to see these Zerglings running around for Hate Me, just chasing after that Zergling of Hydra, which is going to get cleaned up in the natural. And now Hydra has no presence on the map no anymore because these rocks have been dropped. And this Hala is on the way up. So what's it going to be from Hydra again? Probably a Spire, I imagine, because what else can you do off of a lair this quickly? It's not going to be kind of a Nidus or anything, so this should just be a lair coming in. And we'll see how this is going to go. So Lair on the way up, that Lair starts to hit me too. I did feel as though he was probably going to go for the Mutalisks too with the Ling Speed. Now he'll have a little bit less gas to work with, but the plus side, he does have the earlier access to the 5th and 6th gases. So he will have more gas overall at the end of this, but he will initially have the later Mutalisks and the later gas because, uh, the later initial gas, just because of the fact he has um, invested into Zergen Speed, he's 100 gas down, whereas Hydra has not spent that gas. So both players going into Mutas here, we're going to see Muta versus Muta to decide Game 7 of the series. Hatcher is going to come down here from Hydra. I'm just going to see some creep spread pushing on forwards for Hydra as well, pushing over towards, out onto the map over the next few moments as we see some Zerglings. Love this from Hate Me, just has his rocks ready to be knocked down at a moment's notice. However, if Hydra notices that, that's maybe something he can utilize here to his own advantage too, so Hate Me... Uh, it has to be careful about that, basically. And as I see that Spire on the way up, where's the Spire? There it is, a forum hate me too. So Spire on both sides of the map, and Changeling here does see that from Hydra, so he knows it's Muta versus Muta. It's really good information for him. As hate me seeing this later third hatchery should know it's just very fast Mutas from his opponent as well. And again, the main advantage for hate me is that he's got these extra gases a little bit sooner than Hydra does. Although not that much sooner, I mean, they're going to finish up now, and Hydra's just got to wait for this third hatch to finish before he can mine from them, so... It should still kind of make things very even here going in towards the mid game. And Hate Me is actually 10 workers up in total, so that's really nice for him. As we see the first 6 meters coming onto the map. Of course, with the first 6 meters coming out so soon here, potential to get some damage done before Hate Me is really ready to defend against it. And right now, the, you know, what is there for Hate Me? No spore crawlers, he doesn't have any um, queens clumped together. He comes in, sees that spy, he knows what's up, he knows meter versus meter. And he knows that spy is finished and meters are on the way for his opponent, so he does start a spore. He does need that. He needs the spore crawl, otherwise, he's going to be in. A little bit of trouble when these first mutas come across. He'll probably invest himself into his plus one flyer carapace very quickly here. And then to a whole bunch of mutas as Hydra takes a moment or two to add on a few drones before going into further mutalist production himself. That's spot very close to finishing, so Hydra will dive in, get one drone, and that'll be it for now. That queen gonna take a bit of damage as well. But again, only six mutas, so not too much. And uh, Hydra just picking off a drone here, a drone there. Good damage done, I mean, four workers killed is nice, five workers killed. And um, well, 30 mutas on the way for hate me. That's where the real problem's gonna be here. We've got 13 meters against 9 and foremost. It's going to end up being 13 against 13. Hate Me has not started his fire carapace though, and he's losing a lot of draws. He's earlier meters. Hydra is really getting a lot of damage done with this. 15 meters killed now. Queen's coming in, and we are going to see their meters wanting to try and get together before they come in and engage this. And this is what it's going to be as we actually see Hate Me maybe trying to block a few of their meters away. But 19 workers killed. Hydra doing a lot of damage at the start of game 7. And will set himself up nicely into the follow up here. As we're going to see them rocks dropped, and well, now Hydra's actually the one who's going to be opening up the rocks, so Zerglins can start getting onto the map. He starts up his own Zerglin speed as well. As we're going to see these uh, mutas coming in, and just going to be working their way through these rocks. These uh, few Zerglins from Hate Me are going to be coming in, and just working their way through, uh, through these. And as we're going to have mutas just overhead, waiting to see what's up, waiting to see what is happening. Hydra just going to be, uh, again, moving around with these mutas. I mean, both players actually playing rather passively right now. Hydra is the one who does have that plus one upgrade lead, though. 
Now, so he's the one that should really be looking to utilize that. He's also got plus one flyer attacks now started as well. He's actually going to move towards his fourth base. So taking his fourth base here, may want to kind of take down these rocks to kind of give himself easier access to that base with Zerglings. At the same time, it does give his opponent easier access to the third hatchery here over the next few minutes. Zerglings just underneath these mirrors. Fourth base will come down for Hate Me actually taking the pop at fourth expansion, which I find very interesting. The choice of both players to take different expansions here is... Um, very intriguing indeed, so we'll see where this goes, there's Hate Me still never really recovering from that initial drone loss. 56 against 62, so still just a little bit behind now, as the army supply is up for Hydra, and well, he's actually got plus one fly cap, his upgrade still in the lead here, as he might try and attack in, no, he's just going to come in and actually probably deny the fourth base, targets that down, and Hate Me not going to be here in time, has to cancel that. Drone won't go down at least, which is something as well. We're going to see a fight, and well, plus one for Icampus is six, seven seconds away from Hate Me, and that means that this might go very well here for Hydra, as we just have a clump of mutas, but well, look at the units tab, you can just see it's Hydra who's coming out of this with a big mutalist lead. Hate Me is losing everything here. Unfortunately, he's just not quite going to have enough, and the game is called Hydra. Takes the series, four games to three. GG's.